Hey guys, so we're at DTW. It's a nice buzzy show and I'm hearing a lot about uh, composable IT. Tony, what is that? Composable IT is effectively uh, the goal of breaking down the monolithic rigid structures that we have in the telco domain. It's about decomposing those into services, building a canvas, and really having these portable services that you know, operators can pick and choose how they want to put together to, to create their solutions. So sort of interchangeable modules? Interchangeable modules, reusable modules. A little bit like uh, Lego. Yeah, which like is appropriate, Lego. given that we're in Denmark. I would also say IKEA, maybe, because we're in Scandinavia, ah, you know, yeah. potentially, you know. Ho ho hopefully a little bit easier to put together than easier, IKEA. But yeah. maybe better than where we are exactly. today, maybe. Roy, it, so it sounds like a good thing. Is it a good thing for service providers? What's the big benefit in terms of, say, rolling out the ne building the network or rolling out the service? Does it make it faster? I think that there's sort of three advantages, and that's probably more than that. But, but fundamentally, what we're seeing it's like Lego blocks, right? As, as, as Tony said, you know, if you have these blocks that are really predefined and well architected and well tested, you know, putting them together gives you much faster time to market or time to availability of service. So I think that's, that's certainly one of them. The second element is because you, you've tested these things and they are sound on their own and the, the, the interfaces are well defined. When you put them together, they're supposed to work in a better way. So the reliability of the overall service should be a, a lot better. I think that's, that's sort of some, some of the elements. And the third is, you know, hopefully, the people building these blocks are, are creating best of breeds, but you get to choose, right? And so you get a much better quality of service in when you reuse composable architectures where you can string together um, these string of pearls, as, as it would. So you pick the right pearls for the right functions, you put them together, and as long as the architecture is well-defined and it conforms to you know, ODA or whatever TM forum is defined here at DTW, and we've done that for many years, then you end up with a faster time to service, right? Mm. higher quality, higher reliability, and best of breed. So that's the hope. Right? And it's, that's it's the sort hope. of like creating a services meritocracy rather than just getting everything from one company that's or doing correct. it yourself. That's correct. So best of breed, very, yep. very interesting. I mean, how does uh, the composable IT trend fit in with things like automation and AI? I mean, it, I'm assuming it's all connected, isn't it? It's all connected. It needs to be all connected. And I think you raise a point around data and AI especially that needs to be a strong evolution for ODA. Uh, every vendor is looking at their AI strategy, their data strategy. And obviously when you try and map that with a, you know, a decomposed ODA components, which goal is to have that plug and play you know, uh, adoption. But if everybody is coming with kind of a more centralized data strategy or right. AI strategy, there's a bit of a conflict there. So I think, I think at least from, from an ODA perspective, we're gonna to have to build in AI governance, AI to AI interfaces. We're gonna to have to look at kind of data as a product you know, in these ODA components because Otherwise, you know, the, 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 there could be friction between the componentization and an AI strategy, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? it, so it absolutely it's gotta, does. It's got to be a strong correlation there between both. Yeah, you know? I mean, we're on the, the, the bleeding edge of AI anyway, aren't we? Yeah. So there, a lot of um, uh, work needs to be done around it, uh, even around the basic definition of it. But obviously working with a company like Oracle, which has a trust-based relationship with its, with its uh, customers and can offer a full stack solution is going to put a lot of people's minds at ease uh, that you've thought about those issues? Yeah, I mean, we, we offer a lot of the components already and we also have a, you know, a strong data pedigree, data strategy, but we, we understand we have to map that to a, you know, a, a multi-vendor approach, an ODA mm -hmm. canvas. We have, to, we have to map that in. So we're looking at kind of localizing data into the components but still maintaining a kind of a, a unified approach for customers that do want to buy more components from Oracle. But we know we have to operate with other, other vendors and things like that. So we have to have yeah. a, a decomposed AI strategy, if I can yeah. say it like that. No, I well, think you, you know. can, but I also think yeah. that that comes with an interesting and refreshing degree of humility. Roy, what are the, what are the main questions uh, that, that carriers and enterprises should be asking around composable IT when they're looking at uh, going down this path. Sure, so I think back to what Tony said, right? I think there's this element, if you think about these components, you know, sort of the middle layer, right? Which has a logic and some amount of data embedded in it. The underlying element is there is still a sea of data that you could interact within, right? And so I think there's a bottom layer sort of data um, architecture or data pipeline or 
that you have to deal with, you know, independent of the data embedded within the components itself. So I think the data strategy is one of those elements that you got to figure out what your data strategy is. So those, those are the questions if you're asking, what's the data strategy, what's the data coming from, where's it going, who's consuming it at the component level. And then the higher level, the AI elements, which is that what's the AI strategy? How does the AI northbound of these components work to orchestrate these elements? Because it's AI embedded, again, just like data, there's AI and data embedded in these components, but a high level of orchestration, which reflects your business processes and the workflows, right? How does it northbound interact with the rest of the system as well? And that's part of the whole composable architecture. Yeah, very interesting. And I, I, the thing I like about this, I mean, uh, it puts data in the middle of everything, doesn't it? You know, it's you've got to you've got to have the organized data, but that's all, uh, clearly a real strength for yeah. Oracle yeah, because uh, yeah. you know yeah. that's what you're already helping everybody with. So. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's I mean we we we've so much focus on our data strategy. Yeah. You know the way we inter integrate it with our products. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, the way we expose the data is a big thing that we, you talked about. The kind of the mesh there, the data mesh is a is a key part of that, and it's really just about how we get these components interacting with that. You know, and I think we will end up with AI APIs potentially, or a version of that. I think is the way mm. it'll go, mm. and my own view. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely key key for us in Oracle. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Really interesting. You're very welcome. Thank you, Steve.